Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. So here we can see uh, the problem is x percent of y is equal to what? Well, you know, at first glance, this is a little you know strange because percent problems, if you think about it, you're used to using your calculator, and here's our lovely calculator, and we have these buttons on our calculator like so. So you're thinking, well, you know, with my calculator, I can use like one, two, three, four, five. I can I could type in stuff here to figure out percent problems, but I can't plug it or type in an X or a Y. So you, your calculator is not going to help you out. Okay, what's going to help you out here is your knowledge of percent and some basic algebra. Okay, so now the answer here isn't going to be like a specific number, like you know 17 or something like that. But really the point of this problem is to couple your knowledge of percent and algebra to express the solution to this problem, okay? And it's not that difficult. Let me give you um, a little bit of a guidance uh, or hint on um, how to do this problem if you want to try this, okay? Now let's just think about what X and Y are. So X and Y are variables. They represent numbers, okay? So anytime you're faced with a problem like this, and you're confused, so the best thing you could do is just to re, uh, replace these variables here with some other numbers, okay? Make up some nice easy number like 3 and maybe like 10 over here and think about how you would do this problem with, uh, you know, actual numbers. Just think about the steps and be like, okay, I would do this, this, and this to get the answer. Well, that's basically the same steps you're going to do to solve this problem, okay? So if you want to try this on your own, I would certainly think that would be the best way to make uh, you know, the most of this video. But I'm going to get into exactly what we do here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And um, I want to tell you just very, very briefly about my math help program. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're studying any exam that has math on it, that would include like the GED, SAT, ACT, a teacher certification exam, ASVAB. You kind of get the idea. There's a ton of exams out there that people have to take in all walks of life, and there's usually like a math section on it. I can help you prepare for those exams, and if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool program you might be interested in. Now, Obviously, I help those of you having a tough time in your current math courses. If you're truly serious about learning mathematics, you got to take outstanding math notes. And if you don't have great math notes right now, you need to improve this. Um, or, you know, I've been teaching math for decades. You're going to have a tough time, okay, if you're trying to not take great math notes. Just trust me on this. Take great math notes. But in the meantime, uh, if you need some notes to study from, you can use mine. I'm going to leave links to my notes and my math help program in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this and talk about an example. So here's my example. So remember, anytime you have a problem like this that involves variables and it's confusing, a good technique uh, to kind of see what to do is to replace these variables with some numbers and then think about the steps. All right, so X percent of Y. Well, X represents a number, so let's just make up a number. I'm going to call my number 5. You could have done three or any other number, use nice simple numbers. Don't use a decimal value, just, you know, basic numbers. So 5% of, and I'm going to call my Y 20. So if I'm trying to figure out 5% of 20, we have to ask ourselves, do you understand basic percent? Well, let's talk about, uh, here's the solution, but let's talk about what we do. So when we're trying to find a percent of a number, we have to take the percent and turn it into a decimal. Okay, so let's do this over here, 5%. We need to write this as a decimal. Now, um, how do we do that? Well, 5, okay, it's really 5.0%. We need to identify where the decimal point's at, okay? And the way you convert a percent to a decimal is you, there's basically two techniques, okay? Or it's basically doing the same thing. Well, not basically, you are doing the same thing, but there's two ways of thinking about this. So the first way is that you can move the decimal point two places to the left, okay? So 5% is equal to, this would be uh, 1, 2, 0.05, okay? You can see that 0.05 is what I have right there. So the solution is once we change uh, the percent to a decimal, okay, and of course 5% is 
is a decimal uh, 0 0.05, we multiply by the number we're trying to find the, the answer of, right? 5% of 20, so it's 0 0.05 times 20. That, in fact, is 1. Now, let's go back to changing this uh, percent to a decimal. So what you did is you moved the decimal point two places to the left. That's pretty typical for most students, the way they've learned percent. And you might be saying to yourself, yeah, that's the way I learned it. But really what's going on here, okay, technically what's going on here is that we're taking this 5, this 5%, 5 and we're dividing by 100, okay? When you divide by 100, effectively uh, what you're doing is you're going to move the decimal point two places to the left. So... 5%, okay, to write it as a decimal, another way to do that is we're going to take that 5 and divide it by 100, okay, which is going to be 0 0.05, all right? So we need to kind of think of this right here, okay, divided by 100. It's a better way of representing how to move from a percent to a decimal for the purposes of this problem, okay? Because here you're like X percent, uh, is that X point zero percent? And I go like point zero X. Well, we don't really know that because this could be a decimal value in here, okay, as well. So that's not a good way to do that. So now that we kind of thought this through, and again, this is how you want to do these problems. You want to take these, these like kind of variable situation and really study the mechanics of solving a problem with numbers. Think about it. Of course, it does, this does require your knowledge of percent. But now let's go ahead and put this all together with some basic algebra. All right, so how do we do this? Well, remember, if I want to find uh, x percent of y, I need to change this to a decimal, x percent. Okay, so x percent, how can I change that to uh, a decimal? Well, whatever x is, I'm simply going to just divide that by 100, and now I have my lovely decimal. Okay, so you can see my percent uh, symbol is dropped. So this is a decimal. It's just whatever that is, x divided by one, uh, divided by 100. And now I just simply multiply that by y. Okay, and basically I'm done. However, we want to clean this up. We have a fraction here, and let's just write this a little bit easier. So x over 100. All right, that's what this is. Times now y. When you have a variable like this. You could always uh, put a denominator down here because we this is a fraction, so you can think of this as y over one. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with fractions, remember you mu and uh, the multiplication of fractions, it's you're going to multiply the numerators, the respective numerators, and denominators. So x times y, we write that in algebra as xy over 100, and you are done. This would be the correct answer. Okay. Now, if you got this answer, then I must, in turn, give you a awesome happy face with a good old 1985 Mohawk with extra Aquanet hairspray and hairspray, A plus 100. Uh, very, very good. Okay. So, obviously, you know, I think about these crazy little, you know, gimmicks and, you know, happy faces because I went to school in the 80s. That was a great era to grow up. Well, the 70s and 80s. Um, but you know what? I'm glad that I don't see this haircut anymore. You know, maybe, you know, style kind of has a way to kind of come back and repeat itself. Who knows? Maybe in 20 years, this will come back. Well, anyways, let's move on and talk about this problem and wrap it up. Uh, the whole point of this problem is this, okay? Anytime you know, you are faced with something with variables and there's no numbers and you don't know what to do, a great way to think about the solution is to replace these variables with numbers and then walk through the steps, okay? Think about it, walk through those steps and that will give you very, very good guidance on what to do, okay? And hopefully you got this right. And if you didn't get this right, but still learn something, well, I think that's a good reason to still smash that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. My goal is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Now, that's not always easy, especially with more complicated uh, topics and whatnot, but that's my goal. That's my passion. But I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So hopefully you'll follow me. You'll watch my all my uh, content that I've already posted and the content that I will post. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.